my I can drop oh, I can drop. It's Karen. It's Karen. I was just gonna see if I don't know if I have her. All right. I'd like to call a finance committee. But well, I'd like Karen to sit down. What? But I'll let you sit down. Oh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> Let's multitask. Let's <laughs> call to order. All right. All right. It should be a pretty pretty straightforward meeting, pretty efficient. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but before we dive into the agenda, I would like to welcome two of our th three new members. We're able to join tonight. Um, one is official, one isn't. So, uh, Sean Jacobs and Andrew, is it McLaughlin? Yeah, yeah. McLaughlin, excuse me. And then the third one is Ed Ross. If, if you yeah. um, so, we're at full strength of nine, and maybe just ask you real quick to introduce yourselves 30 seconds, whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Sean? Yeah, sure. Uh, Sean Jacobs, been in Reading for uh, just about 10 years. Uh, two boys, six year old and four year old. I work uh, as a product manager for an uh, enterprise software company in Burlington called uh, Charles River. Uh, Andrew McLaughlin, um, two boys, one girl as well, uh, Reading resident, like lifetime Reading resident, wow. family, extended family, um, superintendent, large projects, 100 million, 200 million um, in the city of Boston. Excellent. Awesome. Glad Thank to have you. you. Yeah. All right. Um, so the agenda is in front of you. What's not on the agenda is, uh, and I think Sean, you asked about it just as I was walking back in, a reorg, yeah. right? So we can discuss it. My, it wasn't on the original agenda because this meeting was supposed to be last week, and originally before we had quorum issues. And then when we set the agenda for that meeting, we weren't sure if you know we we, we hadn't you know aligned on the new members yet. So the reorg wasn't uh, officially on the agenda, right? Um, my understanding is it has to be done in July. My inclination was to wait and see if we could have a full board for that, uh, but you know I'm, I'm not wedded to that. Um, so we can either 
um, try to do another meeting in July, and it would be the tail end of July. Okay. Um, I, at least from my perspective, or else I'd be calling it. Um, which is which is also an option, uh, or we could do it tonight with actually five voting members. Right. So um, I don't know if there's any any opinion, any you know, any thoughts from the group. I'm fine pushing it off until we have a bigger group. I just wanted to make sure it was on the radar. Yeah. Um, so. so. You mean the radar of this? Yeah. 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 I'm fine. I'm going to be around till like mid Okay. So. So um, we're missing three right now. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so the only alternative, the only difference between the two, because potentially they could not make it later That's right. month as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is summer. Right. Um, Hopefully, with a month's notice, we could get. You know, tonight we would have five who could vote on a reorg, and we'd be taking a chance that we could get a quorum. Yeah. But also have five or more that could vote. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only thing I would say, so, um, I don't know, can we even do it tonight? We didn't, po we didn't post for it. I checked with... Yeah, so okay. We can, All right. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing would be, if somebody really thought it was important enough, they could, we could set up a dial-in, right? Like, we have the ability yeah. to do yes. that if we need Absolutely. to. So, yeah. Yeah. if we have a quorum issue, but somebody wants to be here for that versus for a fairly routine transfer, right. Um, right. you know, we can accommodate it, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it feels like the general feeling is we'll try for a, and we'll, we can talk about that in our FY20 meeting schedule. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, great. A happy FY20, by the way. Starts, <laughs> starts, starts today. Today. Yeah. You know, when's the next tax bill due? 30 days, right? <laughs> Not today, right? Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, first order of business then is the revert reserve fund transfer for fiscal 19 turned over to Bob. Thanks. There's a one page both sides hand up that's separate. Um, let's go to the back side that shows a lot of figures. The library had uh, several retirements during the year uh, for a total of just over 31,000 in buyback, most of which like, uh, was vacation. This one looks like this. It's on the back of this one, not this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have two Got designs. it, got it. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so Amy knew about these certainly along along the way, and then a couple more further into this fiscal year, I mean, or I should say this calendar year. And um, she had an option to manage her department to not have an overage or not. And I told her it would be silly to close for a day or manage the staff when you only needed a few thousand dollars. So she was able to manage most of this money away. And she's asking for a $5,000 transfer with the expectation as of this morning that she probably only needs 3000 but you never know, just in case something she didn't catch up to in the accounting done last week. So I have on the other side a suggestion or a request that uh, FinCom transfer $5,000 into the library wage line due to retirements. And um, do you guys have a conversation about how many, I'm just wondering how many people are left that qualify for this? Yeah, I thought about that and I don't know the answer, but the numbers certainly dwindle. Two of these employees were here for a total of 80 years. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's not, the, the sick leave is, uh, was phased out long ago, depending on whether it's union or non-union, depends on when. Um, but many years ago, and so there's a limited amount of people who are still able to do that. Uh, I'll ask Sharon if she can. Um, so right now, it's you can lose it. That. Uh, not for uh, sick time. Oh, you, oh yes, if you're if you don't have an ability, and that's caused a different issue. <laughs> use it or lose it means use it. Design people. So, but that's. Uh, not so much a financial issue, it's an operational one. Um, and that's pretty common among municipalities. It's mostly been phased out, but some of my peers are talking about bringing it back for that reason. It did have incentive to not use it, especially towards the end of your career. So I'll ask Sharon to sort of do an accounting for that, uh, you know, for the financial form. I'd be curious myself. So what we would be voting on, you know, for a little bit of context for Sean and Andrew, is the Finance Committee 
as a reserve fund every year. Typically, it's been 150,000. I believe we have more for fiscal 20 or Correct. 200. Um, for just such instances as this, where kind of off cycle of town meeting, where we need to transfer funds, generally it happens towards the end of the year. It doesn't happen often, at least not since I've been on. There was one with firefighter overtime. A couple times couple we have ago. asked for public safety mm -hmm. because we just weren't sure, and your meeting was earlier than July 1st. And I believe in every case they didn't use it. But yeah. we still felt we had to ask just for in case. Yeah. Just in case we have a fire like last night. So sorry, this would be pulling from the nineteen reserve fund. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, the town accountant allows basically through July either fourteenth or fifteenth for this to keep happening. The okay. year is open. Okay. Any other questions on the issue? Uh, just in, in relation to the sick time, you said some of it was phased out. Now you're talking about the state law of the earned sick time per year. No. Um, that's not what we're buying. Back, we're talking about the town Correct. associated sick time that was essentially grandfathered way back when. Right. There was a as of date, depending on which union or non-union, anyone hired after this date does not get retired. Like I don't, I can't sell back sick time when I retire. Right. right. But people who are you know hired a certain date or older can. Okay. That's how it was implemented, and that's how things are typically implemented is this cutoff date. Okay. You've been an employee for a while, while now, 10 years, more? Say again? You've been an employee for a long time now. Longer. Longer than 10 years? Yeah, so most so of the stuff is 25 plus years ago. Yeah. But we still have employees that are 40 yeah. plus years, okay. so less and less every day. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? So we need a motion. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, motion to approve the transfer of five thousand dollars from the FinCon Reserve Fund to cover library wages due to retirements. Second. Second. Further discussion. All right. All those in favor. And that passes five zero. Okay, thank you. That was so hard, was it? <laughs> All right, now we move to the FY20 meeting schedule. So I think it's in the... Oh, yeah, I forgot. For those of you who want to read more about Sean and Andrew and Ed. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you sending those yeah. along. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for filling out. <laughs> and I have something just, just to show you. We don't really have much discussion. There isn't a final state budget yet, but all the draft budgets you can see on one of these pages, it's state, state aid for yeah. FY20 on the top. Um, all of them produce deficits versus what we used as an assumption, which would be no surprise to those of you in the room that have been around. Um, all of them are 200000 ish short on revenues. And on the other side is expenses, it's, um, state assessments, and those are also quite a bit higher than the 2.5% we just budget or assume. Um, so again, the, the net result of the budgets are, and again, we don't have a final figure. Sorry. This, this will be uh, adjusted at November town meeting. If you see in the box, um, depending on which line we use, we're 170 to $200,000 under net. Um, state aid comes in as a net figure. There's a state aid figure, and then they, they retain state assessments, so they don't give it to us. Um, town meeting, nor you, nor I, um, vote on and or deal with state assessments as a cost. It's just netted out in state aid. So my point is just to remind FinCom at November Town Meeting we'll have to make up for about two hundred thousand dollars of a revenue deficit. And we, you know, it's unfortunately been a somewhat frequent occurrence. Um, and normally we have ways to do that without using free cash. And I believe we'll find one for next November. But it's just another year of not even getting two and a half percent in state aid, which is obviously frustrating for many of us. So the meeting schedule. Um, so, okay, great. You laid out um, what did happen in 2019. No, this was. Um, there's a another page. You did, you did, yeah. Second page. Second was, page was last year. Just not from there. And then to the proposed 2020 in here is just patterned on that. Any, yeah, any more or less. Changes? Didn't have an August meeting. So I remember getting complaints last year. <laughs> Two financial forums. 
Yes, um, that's because at town meeting, especially, we discussed the need to have a yeah. some kind of community meeting around building security. I guess we'll call it, or, or honestly, more broadly, capital projects. Okay. <clears throat> Um, we had, um, I had thought the 25th would work fine, and that was what was in the draft schedule that the schools had seen, but then last week we found that our CAS is doing their annual meeting on the 25th, so we had to cross that off, and I met with Gail this morning, and the 18th is fine. So again, for Sean and Andrew, the financial form is a, most of these are, you know, and um, if you remember, I detailed the schedule, I think, for each of you during the, during the process. So. We can talk about the proposal in a minute here, but what you see is our regular meetings, which generally happen on a, that monthly cadence. So there's one for September. The mm -hmm. October one would be the um, well, yeah, the 16th, in, in the same days as the financial form, and then November. And then we go into again the proposal is where we, we would attend the the budget meetings that department heads where they present their request to the select board. Um, in December and then in January where the superintendent presents his request to the school committee. So that's the December, January. And then we go back in February and March to our meetings where we review these budgets and ultimately vote on it. The financial forums are our meeting hosted by us, but it's a it's a broader kind of community meeting. We host the select board, the school committee, maybe some other boards. Um, and it's meant, you know, all the, all the meetings are certainly open to the public, but this one is really meant to foster a, kind of a community discussion. That's what those financial forums are. So. Um, thoughts from the veterans in the group? Uh, did did uh, last year's schedule work? Yeah. Uh, one, any proposed changes, thoughts? Yeah. Uh, so one question I have. So, so Bob, the financial forums, financial forum two, mm -hmm. is a week later than the one financial forum last year. Mm -hmm. yep. And my recollection was we were already crunched um, in terms of use of free cash and what that means for the select board setting the tax rate and that sort of thing. Um, I wonder, I wonder if there's any possibility that at this first one in September. Um, we could have any kind of projected free cash or anything, you know, best sort of best estimate at that point, so that we could kind of have a discussion with the select board about the use of free cash. It, it felt to me like we sort of had one path to go down, and there was no opportunity to really evaluate how else we might consider using free cash, other than the one number we were sort of projecting for the tax rate. Okay, I, I remember that was because of a very specific thing to do with the fire fire grant and what to do with the newfound money, if you will. Um, that, that was the first time that discussion had ever happened, for what it's worth, at a tax classification meeting. And the, the question for the board was, do we leave money on the table and don't collect it because we just got a grant to hire four firefighters? And my comment was, um, just be careful, because until we're in the middle of the grant, we won't know the timing of the cash flow. And we have still seen no money yet. So we ended up getting none last year. Yeah, I, I remember. I think is. I mean, I think that was part and of that. That was tied in by one of the board members to whatever the free cash is. I um, Sharon is not going to be able to tell you free cash in September. There's, there's no way humanly possible. She will be pushed to do it on October, middle of October. She does not always have it, and then she can give you an estimate. Yeah, that's fine. Um, there are more often than not when we have November town meeting the state has not certified our free cash so we are not allowed to use it right so when I just mentioned the revenue deficit we have to find another way other yep. than free cash to make that up so she can give you an estimate but I don't think she's going to be able to give you much of an estimate at all in September we can always ask I'll ask her yeah so I guess the broader point is I haven't seen that we we I haven't seen us have kind of a real discussion around what we think the right level of free cash is vis-a-vis -vis where we're at today, around what we use this year versus last year, around what that could imply for the select board in terms of setting the tax rate, potentially I don't understand that last that. comment, I guess, okay. except as it related to the firefighters grant. I don't so, know why that so, so, so we used a million dollars, we, we approved a million dollars of free cash in the, right. operating, in the budget for, last, for this okay. year. Um, if we were to say a million and a half, okay. right, because we're comfortable with, just as a hypothetical, mm -hmm. a million and a half because we're comfortable with the free cash position, we think regen is going to be good based on the numbers we have at that point, all those sorts of things. Yep. Um, hypothetically, the select board could say we could meet all of our budget obligations and set the tax rate lower than the levy limit, for instance. And the, the process as it, as it stands today doesn't really allow for us to have that kind of conversation between 
the select board and, and this committee because just because of the timing, just because we okay. sit, we vote on we vote on free cash like days before they set the tax rate, for instance. Well, just to be clear, if you go to a million and a half instead of a million, they have to tax more because you're. I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure that the free cash use has never been based on property tax use. So it is a philosophical discussion. I, I understand. Free cash use is never based on property. It, tax. It's, it's never across the property tax line, if you will, and you, and you want it to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying historically that discussion hasn't happened. And you're right. It's tricky to figure out the right timing. Honestly, you could probably have it at the September financial forum. It doesn't matter that you don't know final numbers. It's a philosophical discussion. Yeah, that, that's discussion. fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think that would yeah. be fine. I wouldn't actually wait till October, yeah. you know, to bring up something like that. That's fair. I think that's perfectly fine. And honestly, if you want to start it sooner, uh, the board in August is going to talk about senior tax relief. So it's sort of loosely on the agenda. We can talk. You know, if you want to yeah. do something. But yeah, I, I understand your point. That's just that's definitely a new new angle. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, and just I mean, thinking back to thinking back to years past, I and mean, we've got we've got. Just thinking back specifically to this last year, um, we were, you know, implementing an override in the tax rate. Right. We had a free cash position that was continuing to grow and is well, you know, well ahead of, of our of our uh, policy in terms of free mm -hmm. cash, right? So um, there could have been a discussion, and we just didn't have time for it. But there could have been a discussion about if the right thing to do to think about phasing in the increased tax rate and and supplement that with a use free cash. Okay. So yeah, that was the thought. Yeah, I think it's fair to. I think it's fair. I to think it should be we discussed in September. In September, because sure. yep. it doesn't matter that you don't have final numbers. Yep. It's, it's a discussion. Okay. So I'll make sure that gets added. Topic of discussion at our meeting in late July. Just on this committee. Yeah. Um, so from town meeting, I think there was uh, some discussion that I, I support personally around um, a policy. That just sort of requires us to review outstanding debt authorizations. Yeah, we yeah. can think about the That's specifics right. of that, but yeah. um, to review outstanding debt authorizations, I think that you know we'd have to figure out what we would do post review. But it could be yeah. a recommendation to the select board to place a warrant article. You know, there's probably something along those lines. Um, but we, we probably should discuss sort of our yeah. And Sharon is very interested in having that. Yeah, and I know you said she does it sort of yeah. as practice anyway, but she won't always be the town accountant, right? right? Yeah, let's hope she is. There's <laughs> going to come a day. The microphones are on. Yeah. <laughs> let's hope she's here as long as I. Does she have the opportunity to buy back her sick time? No, she <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's actually why I added your September fourth meeting. You don't always meet before the first financial forum when there is one, but clearly you've got some issues that yeah. you needed to discuss. And you know whether the July meeting can replace it, I what I'd leave it up to you. My opinion in general is get a bunch of meetings on the schedule and everyone knows about them. It's easy to cancel one. Yeah, that. I, I like that meeting there just yeah. a couple weeks before that. Yeah, financial prepare form. for the financial yeah. form. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I had on my, on my mind, and I don't know that it requires us to, no, I think it does require some discussion. Um, Bob, you may remember when we were reviewing the school budget. Um, you were in the room for that when we, were, when we sat down with the superintendent. Uh, not with FinCom, no. You weren't, you weren't in the room for that? Okay. So, um, I didn't watch it. Okay, uh, fair. Um, so there was a discussion about um, essentially, you know, when we're, when we're writing budgets, we're writing budgets to fulfill sort of the things we have to do to make the next year successful with like a ceiling on what we can spend as a practical matter, right? Um, and the natural implication of that is you may be leaving out things, and I would say this for the town budget and the school's budget, you may be leaving out things that in the medium to long term might help the financial stability of the town. Okay. Um, I don't want to position it as a wish list per se, but I think it would be helpful in the budget process for both you and the superintendent to surface, you know, what are those things that don't make the budget cut because we don't have to deliver them next year? But there's a case to be made that there's medium to long term, you know, fiscal, fiscal sustainability as a result of investing in these things. I think that should be a role of this committee to think about those. Yeah, that's that's definitely a discussion. Uh, I'll say for the schools, whether it's financial form, I can't say. But um, historically, the superintendent has a budget to that then goes to school committee that then goes to town manager. Um, some years, the superintendent's budget is balanced to your guidance. Sometimes it's more. Yeah. Sometimes the school committee budget to me is balanced. Sometimes it's more. My budget has to be balanced yeah. to you. 
And we talk about that along the way. And when they have a strong opinion, they do whatever they think is right. Um, so I, I have no problem with you suggesting that they don't deliver a balanced budget. Um, and then the, the way we've changed the budget process a little on the town side, the select board likes hearing from the uh, department heads directly in December now. So those budget discussions are not a balanced budget. They're what all the department heads want. Right. So essentially, you're kind of saying, could the superintendent, let's just say, do something like that? And I don't see why he would object to it. Yeah, I guess I'm taking a slightly different angle on it, which is not the, what would the budget be if we could go 10% over? It's what are the right. things specifically exactly. that are getting cut that would actually have a medium, you know, medium to longer term benefit to the town from a financial perspective? Yeah. Yeah. So, so in, so just, I just want to yeah, one last thing. Like in the school's example, Discussion. Uh, full day kinder, I think full day kindergarten was the first thing, it was the, you know, yeah. what he said would be first on that list, okay. right? They, they believe, you know, can't necessarily write a perfect business case for it, but they sort of believe that universal full day kindergarten in town would have a medium to long term you know fiscal benefit for the town yeah. as an example but it clearly doesn't fit within either our current space or budgetary constraints yeah, that's a really good example of something that just doesn't fit as opposed to well maybe we could just juggle yeah. some things around that that's yeah. not juggle yeah. the other example i remember if i remember correctly is, is changes made now that would reduce the need for maybe special ed programs mm -hmm. right junior in, in middle school high school right right um, yeah Sure. Uh, essentially what I was going to say is okay. you're talking about leadership versus management and like the core le level right now we're managing funds where you're talking leadership as a processes and systems improvement that create sustainability and reduce cost yeah. five, ten years, three years down the road. Yep. Yep. Any other comments on our schedule last year? And, and no, you know, not last year. Did, did, did it work and do we want to pattern it something? It was brutal. It was tough. I, the, it was brutal. Yeah. Um, just because that school committee meetings in particular, everyone from the community is there. So the financial part is, you're, they're three and four hours long. So that's brutal. I don't, I don't know if there's anything they could do to consolidate the financial components because the public is there and they have questions and concerns. But in the, we're there to get an idea of their fiscal budget planning, um, and we're listening to special education discussions. And yeah. it's just tough when we're all, mostly all town meeting members as well, and we also have liaison responsibilities. Yeah, it's it's definitely kind of deep background, right? Um, information. And it's just hard to it's hard to make that schedule. Yeah. So, but you want to get the full picture, right? Um, yeah, I mean. It feels to me like it's the the, the benefit is um, our meetings in Feb March were much more efficient than what had happened prior, um, because in, in those meetings they would come in and you, we'd essentially hear from the department heads everything they did to the select board. They'd have to do it again, so it's more efficient. We we gained the benefit then, but but all all of Bob's. You know, direct reports gain that. that what well, I think they still come, but it's still yeah. it's they it's answer not as questions, as answer questions and it's I think it's a little bit lighter of a burden on them too, which is not nothing, right? It's it's notable. Yeah, and same with the schools; they don't need to come in in right. March and give a presentation. They just come in to answer questions. But you know, whatever you guys. So I don't know if they can <coughs> shuffle anything a little differently or do something a little differently to yeah. try to. You know, let the parents voice their concerns, but let us get in, get the information we need, and go home. Yeah, yeah, it's that's tricky. It, at the end of the day, it's their meeting, right? And mm -hmm. it has to be. But it, it, maybe there's a there's a conversation to have around. Also, you kind of doze off, and you're you're like you know while you're waiting. I'm sorry, yeah. while you're waiting for like them to go down all these rabbit holes that they need yeah. to go through to get through everything. Like you're, it's hard to be focused. Yeah. And you're like, okay, we're on task again. I have to wake up again. Yeah. <laughs> Would be open to creative thinking also on you know maybe there's a maybe there's a more of a strategic approach to these meetings right last year we said look let's we're posted let's all go and yeah. make as many as we can you know maybe we can target it a little bit and you know I'll go to one and then recap the well we got to think about how that works right right we open meeting wall but but recap the group uh, in, a, in a meeting and, and, bring and, and all speed. the meetings are hopefully on YouTube so yeah. you can fast forward in YouTube yeah yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll pass along the feedback. I have uh, too many different audiences for it to change drastically. Yeah. Um, 
maybe there can be a more in de detailed financial update. I don't know if there has been one, but there could be perhaps a bigger one at the beginning and the end or something like that. And you can skip the middle. I don't know. I don't. I know some of their meetings. I don't follow all of their meetings. It's cost center, so that's the hard part. Any other thoughts on the schedule? To follow something similar for FY20? Just you know, maybe we'll just be a little more strategic in how we cover it as best we can. Mm -hmm. These are Wednesdays, I assume, for the most uh, part. Not the December, January ones, but otherwise, yes. yeah. Right. Our meetings. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Why, what's the, why do we start at 7.30 when they always start at 7? Uh, that's something from many years ago when a lot of you were coming out of Boston. Okay. I, I would do anything you want, honestly. You're still coming out of Boston. Hasn't <laughs> <laughs> changed. More than most committees in town was Boston, so that's how it started. I'm fine with leaving it there unless yeah. I'm just curious. Dan's got the time. <laughs> you go home, take a nap, eat dinner. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess no proposed changes. We don't have to vote anything in here. Um, I would like to publish it. I don't mind if you don't vote on it, but just be aware I'm going to publish it mostly for the benefit of the two other elected boards. Yep. And, and, and especially for the financial forums. These are the December, January dates presently that the two sides have for budget meetings. So that could change. If they change it, I'll change it. Last year they had an early December one or mid-December one for schools and that got canceled. So just be aware that's their schedule, not your schedule, if you will. And so at the meeting on the 4th, we'll set, I mean, the agendas, it's pretty much set, but we'll, we'll officially kind of discuss and set the agendas for the two financial forums yes. at that one meeting. Yes. I'll try to give you an outline of November town meeting to the extent I know what financial issues there are. So I don't see August or July on here. We decided we're right. not going to have. We'll, 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 well, we should discuss that, I guess, so a, a late July yeah. meeting. And then we we'll take August off. Because <laughs> look, it, we have to save our energy. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like it. So the Wednesdays are 10, 17, That must also mean 31. 31. Is there a 31? There's not a 31. Wait. In July? There yes, is. There should be. What am I looking at? Unless we change the calendar this year. Yeah. 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 Oh, I was looking song. at June. Yeah. <laughs> I forget how the song goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there was a song. I'm singing from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> A, a new member initiation. That's right. There you go. <laughs> so, and actually, we don't even know. Um, speaking of the Philip Committee, so I saw the announcement about John going, our superintendent going on leave. So, um, we'll, we don't even know if he's going to be running these committees or whether um, Gail, it's Gail, isn't it? The it's budget process. School. Yeah, who's going to be like deciding how that goes? Yeah. 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 But maybe it's an opportunity. It's a, it is a new person to, to do a little differently. Um, any of it? And if and if um, if you all can agree on one or two dates, if we can circulate an email for the three people not here and get a sense of what their attendance would be. I, in other words, I don't know that you should settle on one date right now because right, right, you right. don't know about these three. So what are they like? We're talking the 17th, 24th, or 31st. So just do a show of hands for each one, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And, and all hands count. Yeah. Can do, yeah, yeah that's that's right. you, vote. you count on this one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. So the seventeenth. Well, what are we voting on? Who's well, available? Can. We're not voting. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, we're not voting on anything. Yes, we're not. we are indicating availability <laughs> for enough. a hypothetical meeting <laughs> on one of these three days. Very good. Looking at the camera. On yeah. Time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there was no motion. <laughs> um, so the seventeenth. Availability. Yeah. Wow. Call and dial in. Okay. Yeah. There, dial in. Twenty uh, fourth. Again, dial in. Yeah, you and on that one. Sean. I could. I could. I'll be on my way back from Storyland. I could probably dial in, but I don't know if I'll get here in time. Okay. Thirty uh, first. 
Oops, that's yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I'll um, I'm great. Send that's an email out tomorrow. There's a winner in there somewhere. Yeah. It's like one of those kind of lean towards the first and last one, just because of story language. I'll I'll, I'll I'll make it work. No, you don't. It's first things first here. It'll be like my fifth day there. There's so many stories. Trust me. If you want to see, you want to kill me to have an excuse to bail at two o'clock that day. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're a brave man staying long enough to read it. Yeah, well, I was like, there will be some other stuff next to it. Yeah. yeah. There's no yeah, more stories in the past in a few years, but yeah. that meant we could only have to go for a day. Mm. <laughs> Five in a row is unbelievable. That's, that's amazing. We're just in, to be clear, we're just in North Conway for five days. We probably have a story like that. We'll be there at least probably two or three days, but not, not five. Just be story on top of the story like yeah. five days. <laughs> Oh, at the same time, last year it was 100 degrees. So yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's I'm just there last that. week. <laughs> It'll actually be my third time there this year when we're there at the end of July. It's crazy. <laughs> my kids are in the sweet spot. So many questions. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, yeah, thank you. And then I think we're fine with publishing this book. Okay. I don't have to. It's a calendar. Business liaison assignments. So, again, for um, Sean and Andrew, typically what we do is assign each of us to, you see it there in the handout, right, to be a liaison to one or more. I think it's always more <laughs> yeah. um, of the other boards and committees in the town. It's just essentially to, you know, when possible, attend those meetings. And this is kind of separate from the whole budget thing we just discussed. When we going to the school committee and select board just outside of that just generally kind of connect into those boards and committees attend where we can you know lend any kind of perspective that we can have asked about from a finance perspective and then liaise back to this committee I think what we've never really done is what I've seen the select board do is, is we report back yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's an opportunity nope, I'm I think. Ready. yeah yep. <laughs> Yeah, um, but just kind of again act as a partner into that into that committee, just so we kind of have connections, tentacles. Okay. <laughs> so I have a quick so. question too. So I was a public safety liaison, and but I'm not really sure there aren't. That's not a that's not a board or committee that. Yeah, so the, I'm not quite yeah. sure what to do with that. The underlying ones are departments. Yep. And everyone knows who their liaisons are if they have a financial issue they need to talk to you about. And you're always welcome to inquire. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure I'm hoping to inquire to anyone. It's not been a heavily used path back or forth. Okay. It's just mostly an agenda-driven, issue-driven. If there's something that really comes up that's important, and that has happened. We have had meetings with the uh, police chief and fire chief and a couple of FinCom members to talk about overtime years ago um, in quite some detail. So it was very helpful. OK, but it seems like mostly you got Eric on speed dial. <laughs> Wow. No one called I mean, me, but any fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so including the one we're talking tonight. So, all right. I just want to make sure I was heavy lift generally, but you just never know. Facilities, okay. for instance, with capital projects, you know, one would suppose that might get a little bit easier. Can, yeah. can I make a suggestion? Please. Since we're going to have another meeting in just a few weeks with mm -hmm. more members here. Yeah. Um, so there's two things. One is uh, when I was new last year. Um, I signed up for library, having no clue when library met, and not having the opportunity to figure that out before I signed mm -hmm. up for it. And it was, it's a night I just can never make. So um, maybe, um, I, and I don't want to go through the, you know, the extent to the extent of what the select board does with like a prefer, you know, the preferencing process and that right. kind of thing. But um, especially to give the new folks a chance to sort of see what the list of options is and digest and, and look up, you know, look for when their meetings are typically held and figure out what might work for you, that kind of thing. It might be beneficial if we on this discussion to when we're going to have okay. more folks here to represent their interests and everybody has the opportunity to figure out what schedules look like and that kind of thing. Maybe it would be helpful for next time for me to try to write up something to explain what each is as far as I that, know. That'd be great. Maybe yeah. that helps where the department is. Yeah. Um, you know, this, there's only a few boards listed here. Yeah. These are elected boards as far as I can know and yeah. a couple of other ones. Um, there's not a lot of boards and committees that have direct financial impact, honestly. But again, you're welcome to go to any meeting. So let, let me work with the other department heads in the schools and try to come up with something for your next meeting that can help you, and we'll send it in advance. 
and especially a meeting schedule for public boards because most of them have the same night all the time, right. whatever it is. It's a good touch. Yeah. So why were we asking somebody else to cover library of trustees to nice. what night? <laughs> it's Mondays. It's Mondays. That's the short version. Yeah. Can't do it. I can't they're not really long meetings. So, no, they're not. That, that was they're, never one, they're very nice people. It's very a very nice easy people. meeting. <laughs> I can never do it. So that was permanent building committee too. And I always yeah, wanted to yeah, go yeah, and do one of their walkthroughs of the schools. I could just never. I, I went on one of those walkthroughs. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Great. <laughs> All right, the next one we've done a bit of already, just, just kind of looking ahead to potential future meeting topics uh, areas. I'd like to raise my hand. Um, okay, Please. so I've been, I won't give you a full report, but I've been attending the RNLV meeting since uh, January. Oh, the liaison January. report, all right. Yeah, it's not, I'm not organized enough to do that, but um, it, I haven't, I've gone to enough meetings that I would like to share with you guys. Um, um, also, I'm, I'm also thinking that if we discuss a report next time we meet, perhaps RMLD might make a good financial forum. I know we tried, and their CFO or, or finance director offered to come and talk to us. They have a very different, or they have a different model than municipal does. They have a different model than corporate does. Um, you know, they, they have $20 million sitting in, um, four or five restricted accounts that we don't have on the municipal side. And when I started in, in their board meetings asking questions about them, it's very helpful to explain, for them to explain what they're for. Because it's not apparent from the name. Okay. What are they for? How often do they use them? And, and the great news, um, just to give you, you may, you probably were there at the audit committee. So, yeah, so they get like gold stars. They're not going out of business. They're extremely healthy. What I found to be interesting is they have absolutely no outstanding debt. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> like, wouldn't we like to be like that? So, but w when they, s when we talked to them, and I also went to the solar, um, we have a great rebate program. You can go look it on their website. I went to their solar day, and um, one of their gentlemen, I think his name is Chuck, still says that net rate net metering is not sustainable financially for them. So net metering could be good for the municipal side. It could be good for the schools. It could be good for individuals, residential customers. But they're saying it's not sustainable. But there's no meat behind it. I just think I think there's enough there for us to, to chat with them and, and really understand their business model. And um, I did actually make a request to one of the auditors with um, Dave um, Tell has been awesome. He is the chair of the Reading Municipal Light Board. With his blessing, I asked the auditor who they also do five other Reading accounts. Um, you know, municipal light board accounts to ask whether we're in the bent how those funds are versus their um, peers, like benchmark them. Mm -hmm. We've also asked about green communities. There's loans. There's funds. Like that would all could, could potentially be something that Reading might access to. What I'm a little frustrated about is I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any answers. So I'm not sure if I need to. When I ask the question, we need to say so. Like the next board meeting, we'll have an answer. You know. So anyway. It's been an excellent educational process, and good news—they're not going out of business. But maybe there's maybe there's more we can do. But you might want to check out the solar rebate. It's really good. They have a new um, battery storage project. If they've not already cut the ribbon, they're getting kudos from the municipal uh, regional planning uh, council. I think it's called. Oh, I mean, PC, PC. As a yeah. very forward-thinking thing, so that's great because, like, yeah, people are generating solar power, and then, then the next thing is. We don't need it until we need it at a peak um, time. So when you have batteries and those prices come down, it's a very good thing to invest. So they made a capital investment in some really hefty duty batteries that it's all good. It's not it's not bad, but maybe it could be better. And that's aside from I wasn't part of the whole discussion yeah. about the annual we own Reading Municipal Light. Reading owns Reading Municipal Light. Um, maybe it would be helpful since we have three new members to really talk about mm -hmm. what that means. Kind of a, okay. So in relation to this, because uh, I'm familiar with the net metering, right? So um, part of the the conversation is uh, due to the safe, the efficiency of electricity, net metering is lower. And that the argument is that they essentially bill less than what they were billing before. But um, based upon, it was last year, we went over the budget for what RMLD was bringing in. And we talked about, because 
the British RMLD proposed a reduction in the projected budget that they were going to provide Reading. What well, ended up... Was this a select board meeting? Uh, no, a town meeting. Okay. Town meeting, right. Um, does these state savings and these energy savings, does, does this promote, reduce, or does this help us with the budget? I know on a grant sense it might, but with RMLD, um, does it kind of back what RMLD is saying in a reduction of net metering in order to reduce the uh, budget that they're going to provide the town of Reading? Um, actually, actually, that's the area I haven't gone near because it was a big deal this spring. I wasn't involved, so to tell you the truth, the compensation to the town is not an area I've been looking at. I've been okay. looking at these other, mm -hmm. but you know that would be that's on my list. There's a lot. There's a lot to dig in, is what I found out. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a big organization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot going on, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, I certainly can't talk about most of what they do. I look foolish, but. General Manager did say if you ever wanted her to come in, and she was thinking more of an annual update, she's happy to do that. Um, she did learn that you know, her predecessor used to visit FinCom once a year. Now, honestly, I don't remember what time of year, um, but I, and their fiscal year has changed over time. But for instance, if she's going to give a report at November town meeting, then she could speak to you either just before or just after. I don't know which is most Actually, convenient. Actually, they just, yeah, they just changed the fiscal year. Yeah, to match the town, right? So I'll, I'll bring the thought back to her that you would like to meet with her maybe I annually. I believe the financial director. Yeah, but they, you know, they'll bring the staff, oh. whoever's needed. Okay. Well, um, I think when she we'll offered try to, and then she said, we'd like to see all your questions in okay. advance. I was going to say, we'll try to get her questions in advance, some kind of an agenda drawn up. They might take a month or two to do the research. I don't know. But she did indicate she'd be happy to come in and visit with Finn Well, Well, yeah, I, I like the idea of an annual update. It, feel, it feels to me like before the presentation to town meeting, if that okay. works. Yeah. Um, you, you have a November meeting. Well, as so I said, what about the, being part of the financial forum? It's just something that's already alive. It's, it is, yeah. But, but I'm sorry, what I was going to say also is, you know, with an eye toward an annual update, but this first one could be RMLD Finance 101, yeah. right? Yeah. For, for, yeah. for this yeah. group, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the reimbursement to the town, the, the, the solar costs. Yeah. How uh, your different accounts, accounts that we don't do, and what are they, yeah. Just run it down. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So you, um, in theory, have a November 6th regular meeting. Schedule, that's one possibility. Town meeting's the 12th, so it's you know, less than a week beyond. Um, and otherwise, if you do it after town meeting, that gets into December. I, you know, I'll work with her, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll work with Eric. Yeah. And just get a sense. Whoever the chair is. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry, whoever the chair is. <laughs> get a sense from RMLD of what their availability is and what their preferences, if they have one. Okay. And the financial director absolutely says she'd be happy. Okay. That she's, you know, she loves her job. Just so we <laughs> but, but adjust I, as, I would say yeah. so, and then adjust as needed. Yeah, I like it. Because we're set now. The payment to the town is set for like three years, correct? I think two years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But we don't have to deal with it like this fall. Correct. Okay. That's cool. Anything else in terms of We talked about the debt authorization. There's no structural motion from town meeting. So we'll, we'll certainly be um, What else? Policies we haven't looked at in a while? Um, other? Nothing. Oh, do, uh, you still agree with uh, me, I guess, on peer communities, Route 23, Act 25? We've talked about that. So I don't know if you want to address that. Oh, you formally have a different list? Uh, does it include Lexington and Concord? Uh, Lexington. Yes, okay. Oh. So that should be it's good. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll show you the list of how many employees we lose to Lexington, from Lexington to Reading, and then you can decide. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a subjective do it. That's the only thing I can think of from a policy standpoint that's not nicely tied up in the court, if you will. Yeah. You know, you, you talked about uh, putting some money into a stabilization fund, so if you want to do that for November town meeting, that's probably the right time, not April town meeting, I guess. Um, that would require an article that's, that's not a hard article, but require an article to be decided on it's early September. That's something I'd put on your summer agenda if you want to do it. Yeah. You know, 
we have a rough idea. I don't know, free cash is 10 million plus or minus. All right. Um, you know, and you can kind of go from there as to whether you want to move money. It's, it's totally your call. I, I really have no opinion. It's free cash or it's stabilization. Free cash takes a majority vote. Stabilization takes two thirds. That's the only difference. Are we waiting on? So this is the conversation coming from the audit meeting. I don't know. Oh, you weren't. No, I wasn't there. So I don't, I don't know. Sharon didn't mention anything about that, but I can ask. Her. I was just thinking of a discussion you've had over the last year as a board. Mm -hmm. Something also is, you know, we talk about the generally the two big wild cards to in, in, in the budget process where we just don't always have the information we need is, or we make assumptions, right or wrong, state aid, health care, right, right. And the, and the you know, special that's creeping into that. That's where, I was, that's where I was going, right. So those are the two, and we, we'll, we'll set the state aid number as a matter of principle where we set it, even though we know we're not going to get it. And we, we, we try to be you know, conservative right on health care. But the agreement is we'll, we'll step in from a free cash perspective to supplement one way or the other where we need to is state aid and health care. Um, and special ed is increasingly a significant spend and unpredictable. And so this, just from a budgetary approach perspective, is there a conversation to be had there with kind of how to manage that volatility year to year? And if you don't mind, there's probably a fourth one for this year, hopefully only, uh, pensions. Mm -hmm. uh, the pension just came back with a study and uh, they asked if we could uh, <coughs> sustain a 15 or 16 percent increase in the next year. And looking at all the options, I said yes, because of our health insurance savings. You know, if that's all kind of in the bucket of complicated costs. And that would then ease the burden for every year after that. Mm -hmm. It'll be two and a half percent instead of six. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, we could. It's an open discussion where this goes, but it's just something you should put on your radar. And if there is a one-time leap in pensions, you know, I might ask you to consider using a little more free cash in that one year. Mm -hmm. um, something I've, I've been very concerned about, but I couldn't put it ahead of the override for the reasons the override happened right. with long-term liabilities. This is not one of them. I know behind it. And, and so along those lines, it's also along the, the RMLD Finance 101 piece. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll hide behind this a little bit and say for the new members. <laughs> 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 also for anyone else in the committee who could benefit, just, mm -hmm. a, a, yeah. a, again, I hate to use the phrase 101, but just, a, just a, again, a, a re-explanation and overview of pensions and OPEP. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the July meeting might be good for that. I'll check to yeah. see what date Sharon is available. Yeah. Not my influence. So, Bob, one of the reasons I think the reasons that we've been able to think about healthcare expenses as being budgeted conservatively and being able to make transfers from there has been we're seeing employees take the incentive to move on to like spa their spouse's coverage, for instance, right? Yep. And um, uh, we've had recent negotiations with a bunch of the unions that have allowed us to maybe change the plan designs and things like that. So, there's a tail on both of those things. Right. As as we, you know, we're going to get to a point yes. where those people who are going to move, move to the market. Right. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to tell me exactly how many years a tail because it's impossible. But I, I mean, are, are we talking like in the next fiscal year or two? We likely still can think about healthcare as something that provides a padding, and beyond so. that, it's TPD. I think two years is safe. Okay. Um, it's a little unknown because we have significant negotiation scheduled for the fall. Okay. But I'm pretty comfortable saying it's probably okay for the next two years. Now, if national health insurance goes up 20%, it's not okay. Well, sure. Yeah. We're just kind of figuring and guessing that national health insurance is seven and a half for no good reason, other than the number of the number of views. Um, and nationally, it does seem to have quieted down. The discussion has quieted down. I think part of that is people are now used to seeing 10, 20% mm -hmm. increases and they're not shocked anymore. So mm -hmm. that doesn't fix the problem, it just quiets the discussion. Um, I think the, again, the reason I think we're okay for, for instance, increasing the pension liability or the contribution is this, we're fine for the next year, absolutely. Two years very probably okay. after that. Discussions could get fun in two years. Is what I'm 
when the RMLD competition yeah, isn't frozen right, anymore. Right. And well, it, it, it'd be very tough if everything went the wrong way. Yeah. So the theory is a larger increase with the in a sooner date that you know you can manage the funds and then a smaller increase after, like you said, two and a half after the 12. Yeah, interestingly, the actual level you spend is not that important to me. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be. It's the annual change because every budget is a real tight picture of one year. So if revenues got up 3% and retirement goes up six, well, that's crowding out something else. Right. If we can raise to that level in a first year and take the pain, then the next year when it only goes up two and a half, three percent, oh, we can handle that. So it's a little bit not common sense. Mm -hmm. When you really look at the budget process as a very discreet thing, it, it does tie out that way. And honestly, the faster we pay off pensions, there's going to be a huge drop in the pension liability when this thing is fully funded. You'll have to figure out what to do with all that money. <laughs> I mean, it's like eight or nine million bucks across our the enterprise funds and general funds. So it's well more than OPEP needs, quote unquote, which I only found out in the last month. I was thought it was close. Can't wait to solve that problem. Yeah. So you 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 take RMLVs, OPEP, and um, pension liabilities, and, and and that's part of the big picture. Well, the actuaries put it all together and then have to take it apart because we need to know the differences. But when they report big picture, everything's together, and that's what I first read. Okay. Anything else? It sounds like then a meeting late in July will be reorganized and if it works for Sharon, maybe, a, yeah. maybe an overview of pension and OPEP. We'll target RMLD for November 6th and see how it goes. We'll keep our July meeting right. Sean, get back to Storyland. <laughs> <laughs> Tell stories. I think it's just minutes. Uh, how many meetings? Two, right? Yes. No. Just the one. No. Yeah, it's two. Should be two. One of them is just a town meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first one was the big one where you, where you voted. Yeah. And then the second one, it's just that we, we huddled before a town meeting to go through, was it the, the, the land stuff, the land right. articles? Yeah. yeah. Everybody, a minute to look through. Uh, wait a minute. Four, four, four would vote here. Four of us. Five have to. Five have to pass. pass. And you can vote on minutes you weren't that at. you weren't court, at. If yeah. you want to, there's nothing illegal about that. Okay. Many people feel creeped out by that. You can. Do it. So, Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> if you're comfortable, I read through the minutes. All right. If you don't vote, we can't pass it. Which is fine, we'll vote on it in another future meeting. All right. Yeah, it yeah. can't be legal, right? You could have turnover. All right. That right. prevent you from having yeah. a quorum right. of previous members right. only. Right. So. Right. Right. Yeah. We talked about that at the FinCom selection committee where there were three of us. We're two, ten to, and yeah. we meet annually. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Otherwise, we're going to take a motion. A um, motion to accept the meeting minutes um, from 313 and 425-219. Both at the same time. Okay. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor. Passes 5-0. Motion to adjourn. Second.